Tablet Pressure in ZBrush can allow you to do a lot of different things with your brush. It's a really important feature for us to make sure we have our head all the way around it. So I'm going to open up the tray, throw the palette in there, and uh, we'll keep the standard brush selected. So notice that you can use global settings. If this is on for your brush, then the settings are actually being taken from preference, tablet, and from these settings here. You can control the size, the Z intensity, color sensitivity, uh, lazy pressure, which uh, averages out the pressure along your stroke. But having that off can allow you to create a whole bunch of different effects. So let's just create one stroke. Just see what this looks like normally. It's pretty standard, standard brush. As I press lightly on the surface and then harder, lighter, harder, I'm getting my uh, my effect. Now if I come into the size, notice that the size is already kind of a little bit up from bottom. Let's just set that all the way down. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to press lightly, harder, lightly, and then harder. And you can see the size differential is quite large. It's, it's bigger than the, than the first stroke. And that's because this is representing zero pressure, 100% 100 pre, 100 pressure. So as I drag this up, then it's telling uh, ZBrush even zero pressure is still going to create some sort of effect. Or I should say uh, not zero pressure, but you know, 0 0.00001. Very little pressure still has an effect. If you set that all the way up, so that it's a one-to-one, -one, then there is no pressure sensitivity no matter how lightly, unless you actually pick your pin up, then that brush is going to be the same size. So when would you ever want to use that? Well, one time that you might want to use that is when you are putting a tileable uh, pattern on. Let's just select, say, alpha 62 which is tileable, go to stroke, turn roll on, and now no matter what we do, it's all the same size. If we have our pressure sensitivity set on, then as we press lightly, it's small, bigger, small, bigger. And that's really not going to be what we want. Any time we're trying to lay down a tileable texture like this, generally going to want size to be a one-to-one. -one. So that's one use for it. Let's just close that circle, or that uh, curve, sorry. Z intensity. So what is Z intensity? How does that work? A lot of people get Z intensity confused with depth. But what you want to do is think about uh, depth as the absolute limit of your effect. Now standard brush has a special relationship with depth. Standard brush actually has depth built into the algorithm so adjusting depth here doesn't really matter. Standard brush is part of an, the, an older part of the matrix and so its algorithm is really just going to, well it, it's a little unpredictable with depth. So I prefer not to even get into it. Depth is really created or kind of pulled out of the clay brush as a separate part of the algorithm. And so it's not really relevant right now. So Z intensity. This is really how fast you're going to get. How much pressure do you have to put to be able to get to that full height? If I set Z intensity all the way to 1, then boom. I don't have to press hard at all. It's just going to go immediately to pulling out the maximum amount. Notice that if I lower this all the way down, I'm pressing lightly and then hard. Now I'm going to set that all the way up to 1. Now I'm pressing lightly and then hard. Much less difference between those. Really more than anything else, we're seeing the size factor into that. So now, no matter how I press on it, it's the same thing. 
not much else to it. Let's set that down. Set our Z intensity back. And RGB intensity. Notice that this curve is preset. What's really affecting this curve is the focal shift. And so this is something that PixLogic has done because they found that setting the focal shift to about 75 created a more predictable uh, painting effect. And so you can actually adjust that so that the painting is more dramatic uh, or more in, uh, has a higher intensity with lower pressure. To do that, you just set this back to zero. So this is something I don't change very often, but there will be cases of tileable textures uh, where that might be relevant. Brush mod, brush embed. Brush embed is depth. Brush mod is using this, brush modifier. And brush modifier has gone through a couple of changes, but brush modifier is used to basically augment the behavior of the brush. Remember, press control and hold that over any brush that you want to understand what it's doing. So the primary use, you'll see it's mentioned in the second paragraph, is with a standard brush. And uh, that's where it came about during my time with Pixelogic. We were uh, trying to find ways to add more power to the brush system without uh, you know, adding more interface items. So brush mod was developed to basically blend two brushes, inflate and, um, and pinch. So let's just set this all the way to about 75, turn poly frame on, and see what happens. Notice that it's pinching. Let's turn poly frame off. It's pinched and it's pulled it out. So what we've done is combine standard and pinch. Now our pinch is too dramatic right now. But see how that gets me a nice clean line. That was something that was really important. Now, a lot of these clean lines have been taken care of now with brushes like Trim Dynamic and uh, H Polish. H Polish now can really get you nice clean edges and refined forms. I'm going to press Alt and just use um, H Polish to really kind of build that clean edge between them. So what we're seeing with standard brush is a 3.1 feature, which was then just made all the better. Now let's switch this to negative uh, 45, and now you're seeing it combined with the magnify brush. So zero, and there you go. And the magnify brush's algorithm is quite specific. It's a variation of the inflate brush. But what it is trying to do is as it pulls out, it's starting to kind of mushroom cloud, but still kind of keep the form. Uh, so this is really a brush that we use a lot when we are uh, adding muscular detail or inflating um, some part of the arm. This is going to really help you retain the sense of the muscle underneath, whereas inflate might occasionally get out of control. Let's go through some of these brushes with another model and just see what, um, see what their effect can be and how tablet pressure is really going to affect us. Let's just cruise through and select some of these other features like let's say planar cut thin. Keep an eye out on size and see what happens as I go to uh, planar cut thin. Notice that size is set to 100%. Z intensities drag down so it's very sensitive. So now the goal with planar cut thin is to just cut an island into the model somewhere. Let's see what happens if we set size down. Notice how the effect is not even coming on. I'm going to have to press super hard and even then not get it. 
So now we're actually exhibiting really just planar cut behavior. So what planar cut then needs is it needs this brush to be set at its maximum no matter what or it's not going to actually be able to function. So let's pull that up to 50 percent and then let's pull that all the way up to 100 percent. And so notice how planar cut thin is cutting these cross sections out. And the specific nature of this brush is that it really adjusts this cross section based on size of your model and the size of your brush. So now I'm dragging a different cross section. As I lower my brush size, I'm going to drag another cross section. So again, for it to function, size needs to be all the way up. Another brush we can look at that has a, um, a different setting is uh, the clay and clay buildup. So let's take a look at clay. Clay is just using global settings. And then if we hover over the uh, clay buildup, we'll see that the, the base of this brush is clay, which means this brush is really only using uh, features within the brush palette, the alpha palette, and the stroke palette to create its behavior which means that any one of us could have created this brush. The uh, power of ZBrush is in creating your own brushes. I created the rake brush that's in here, but anybody could have beat me to the punch and pulled that one off. It's an awesome brush, but it just uses an alpha and the clay brush. Clay tubes, something I pulled together as well, but then again, it's just the alpha. So keep in mind that you can do a lot with these brushes. So let's just see what the clay brush is doing. We've already seen its behavior pretty straightforward. Now let's come over here and select clay build up. And notice that it's more like clay tubes, it has an alpha. But it's, let's select clay tubes, it's a tablet pressure is going to be something of interest. What's the difference between clay tubes and clay build up? The primary difference that I see is going to be in this depth embed. So let's just test out these strokes as well. Okay, so notice as I stroke along the model with clay tubes, the end of this gets a little messy and overlapping and creates these artifacts. Now if I come in with clay buildup, I'm going to be building up form. The ends are quite nice, quite clean. I can stroke back and forth, and it's going to behave a little bit better. That's coming from the brush embed. So let's just put this to the test. Clay tubes come into brush embed. Let's just set that all the way down. Notice now that we're getting a much nicer behavior, cleaner, much more like what clay buildup is doing. Here the edges were quite strong, very dramatic, because what clay tubes was doing was instantly sizing itself, or I should say, instantly establishing its embedded depth. Now, by adjusting this down so that zero is zero, zero pressure or 0 0.001 pressure equals, you know, almost no depth. And then as we increase our pressure, we'll increase the depth of it as well. That is something that's going to create a smoother, cleaner stroke as we progress. Much smoother than if we just say immediately lock to that view no matter what our pressure sensitivity is like. So now let's just fine tune that going back into clay buildup. Notice that it's not all the way down to zero. I'm going to go back into clay tubes. Set that back. And we are absolutely getting a nicer stroke. The other feature that clay buildup has on is buildup. Let's go into the samples palette. 
This is the feature that Clay Buildup has on by default. Let's just switch over to it. What is Buildup? Buildup is going to allow you to make a stroke on the model and then it will constantly build up and up and up and up as you continue to brush on the surface. So it is just building, 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 building. If we switch over to the clay tubes brush, notice that at a certain point I reach a height. It's not going to build up any more unless I pull out of the model and try to find another height, but not going to be very successful with it. Once we turn build up on, then that behavior changes. It's going to build up and build up as we brush on the surface. So that's a bit of information about the tablet pressure and how even things like uh, brush embed can have an effect on making your brush either a nice graceful brush or a hard dramatic uh, brush.